Welcome to another Pixel Game Maker tutorial. Today's other runtime action we're going to go over is the template move settings. And this runtime is really unique as far as movement runtimes go because it offers some basic pathing options for your objects. You'll have some basic patrolling, some basic uh, moving towards the player, and it'll also offer a smarter pathing in your platformer games. So let's go ahead and get started and dive into this runtime. I'm going to put this runtime on this flying robot object that we got here in the scene and I'm going to click that I want it first then we're going to go up here to the top and you're going to see a move left to right and a move up down now these two are they pretty much have the same behavior one's just left right one's up down and they are going to be your basic patrolling type so if we were to click on move left right and just leave the settings as is and hit preview you'll see that it's going to throw the object on and it's going to move the object left and then right and then it's just going to repeat. Now let's go to some of the settings in here. This first one here is the direction that it initially starts. So initially it's move left and then right, but if you click this option it would start moving right and then go left. So if we hit preview you would see that now it went right and then left. Now this duration here is the amount of time that it's moving in that direction. So for instance, in, our, in the example that we previewed, it moved one second and then it would turn around, move one second, turn around, move one second. Now if we do not set this, then what's going to happen, and right now we're moving, we're starting in the right, what's going to happen is this object is just going to go right forever till it can't go anymore and then it's going to turn left. There is a tile wall. Uh, blocking on here and then it goes off screen so it's never going to turn back but that's how it would work is it would move until it can't move anymore and then it would turn around and the move up and down is basically the same thing so we can take the logic that we learned up here and apply it down here the only difference is is if we preview it it's just going to be moving up and down now one thing to note is that these settings will work no matter what kind of move type you have, whether it's basic, tank, or vehicle. And it's not going to respond to tank and vehicle in as far as like turning and stuff like that. It's just going to instantly go. So that's something to know. If you need, if you have a tank and vehicle, but you want them to instantly turn and, and go, this might be the setting that you want. All right, so these are the, again, the patrolling settings now let's go on and let's see what we're gonna say bound for the end we're gonna have to show this in a different project we'll go to random next so if we clicked random we have a duration and we have an end time so the duration is the amount of time that it's moving so let's just say that we want a really short movement in there and then the end time is when does it move again because this move template does not stop until you have a stop in your logic so this is so these keep going until you have a stop so let's let's leave it at one second so we want our duration of movement to be very short a tenth of a second and then every second it will do that and if we preview it we'll see that it's making these short movements it waits a second and then it goes again now yeah normally it is random there it was going left for quite a bit there but yes it's going in random directions and everything is looking good all right so now we have the move towards nearby player and the move away from nearby player and these two you can consider as your basic pathing of an object moving towards the player and it's it's not smart as in like it goes around objects and stuff but you can ignore wall detections and stuff to make it uh happen as you as you need it so let's focus on the move towards nearby player and let's preview this or let's click okay into this and i'm going to go to actual scene for this so we have it to go towards the player and let's click play and you can see that it's moving towards the player. It It's still moving towards the player as I move around. 
Now, if I move over here, you'll notice that it started, it stopped following me and it's following that chair. Now this is something that we have to be careful of and is, is good uh, learning for us. The, when it says move nearby player, it means player group. Now if I was to click on my Baz object here, the settings, you'll notice that this object is of the player group. And also if I clicked on this chair object settings that it was following, the chair is also player group. So here's something that we can consider is that it is highly recommended that your player here in the settings and group management it is highly recommended that only the player in your game is in the player group and to have different groups for everything else, stationary objects, collectibles, so on and so on. Now, there is a way around this. For instance, let's go back to this, uh, what I called a uh, new bot, and you'll notice that it does have an option that you can prioritize the locked player. So if we were to click this, <coughs> hit OK, and play test, it actually wouldn't do anything outside of the normal move towards the nearby player, and it would just select one that whatever player group is closest. What we have to do first is we have to lock an object. Now we're going to go in this in another video, so I'm just going to show you an example. So you could lock an object and you can set the object specifically to be the uh, Professor Baz, which is the, the player in there. And then we would click OK here. Now something cool is that you can click on the runtime and you can move it up. You can reorganize them. So the first thing it's going to do is it's going to lock to the object. And then it's going to prioritize the locked player. So if we clicked uh, play test, the object or the new bot is now following this player, uh, controllable player. And even though I get close to the chair, it still wants to follow the player. So that's how you can get around of the uh, player group is by locking it to a specific player. Okay, so now Let's move template again and let's show the move away just so we can show it here. And we'll prioritize the locked player again. And we will hit play test. And as you can see, it moves away and it's moving away based off where the player is. So that works. And then stop. So stop is not going to do anything just by previewing it. So let's have the this enemy moving towards the nearby player. And then in our next state that we don't want any more movement, so whatever state that would be in your object, we would put a stop move template. So if we clicked OK on that, and then let's just say that we wanted to wait let's see here, after a certain amount of time, we want it to wait one second so it's gonna move towards the player for one second and then it's gonna stop and if we hit play test you'll see that's moving and then it stops so that's how stop template works also notice that stop template works for for all of this so it's the one thing that you gotta know is you have to stop this template manually it they don't stop automatically Alright, so now we can, let's see, don't drop levels, I'll have to show that in another project. We can, if we, say we move towards player again, and we can ignore wall detections of other objects. So if we did this, and we hit OK, oh, that's the wrong state here. I'm going to delete this one that we set up here, and go to move towards nearby player, and ignore wall detection of other objects. And as we would think just by the naming is that it would ignore my wall detection, which it's doing right now. So that is one option we have. And the next option is to ignore tile wall detections. Now it has a little 
recommendation here. If you're doing this on a platformer game with gravity, then you're it's wanting you to re, or it's recommending that you set gravity not affected gravity to 100%. Otherwise, it's going to go through the wall and fall. Or it's just going to actually be standing and fall because now it ignores tile wall detection. So, if we click that in this top down and we hit OK and we hit play, notice that this computer I can't walk through. So, if I go around here and boom, it goes through the tile wall. And those are objects. So, since we did not select go through objects, it won't go through, but it will go through the tile wall of that tile. Okay, so that is it for these ones. Now let's go into bound and don't drop levels. So for that, I actually have another project that is gonna show that. Let's go to bound first. Now this is the project that comes with the top down view if you do not collect create a blank project. And in it, the player has a projectile or a bullet that it shoots out, just a beam. And when it creates the initial beam, I added a move, a template move setting, and I added a bound. Now, what bound means is, you can think of it more as bounce, actually. It's going to bounce the bullet throughout the room, which we will see when we play test the game here. Make it a little bigger here, and you will see that when you shoot the bullet at the wall, it bounces, and it will bounce according to the angle. It basically goes in the opposite direction or the, the angle that would make sense. And if we were to skip this move template so that it does not become bound or have the bounce to it, and we hit play, then we would notice that the bullet does not bounce. It just does its normal... Uh, thing where in this particular case it's waiting until it destroys itself. So that's what the bound setting is right there. So now let's go to don't drop levels. Now for that one we are going to need to go to a platformer. So I did a side view project but did not select blank as well. And in it it has an object. Uh, for one I also had the bullets bound so we'll be able to see that example in a platformer and then I took the enemy that it had and in the setup here I have it pathing left and right so it's doing a patrol of left and right and I have selected first off I'm going to show you what it's like if you don't drop levels so let's just do a uh, patrolling pathing with this object and see what happens here. Hit OK, play test, and we will see that the object starts moving and it falls right off. So now if we go to template move settings and we hit don't drop levels, I'm pretty sure you think you can think right now what it's not going to do. Now let's see what happens when it goes patrolling. It's just going to go back and forth. So that's all that setting don't drop levels is, is that it does not drop levels. Which is pretty handy for these platformer style games. Alright, let's go back to the initial project here. Go back to our uh, new bot. So we've covered all of these settings and they work really well. Now let's, I'm just gonna select this, that's fine. And we'll just leave it at that. So I'm gonna hit okay. Now, as always, I'm going to hit the changeable even after placement on scene button. And we're just gonna see how that looks in the scene. So we've got our one new bot here, which now we can adjust according to what we need that object to be and we can copy and paste another one and let's say this one we want to patrol left to right this one we want to patrol right to left and then we could copy another one and we could say this one we want to follow the player 
and we want to ignore its wall detection. And so now, or actually ignore the tile wall detection, there we go. So now if we were to click play, we would have all these objects doing different things just according, or just by having that setting, oh, we didn't lock player, so it will follow the chair if the chair gets closer, see? Because I think I must have took away the locked player, did I? Yep, I did. So that was one of those things. Anyway, I hope this tutorial was useful. If you have any cool ways that you've used this or anything, go ahead and uh, tell us about it down in the comments. And we will see you in the next video.